Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Camber stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Camber Energy acquires, develops, and sells crude oil, natural gas, and natural gas liquids. It recently acquired Viking, and Viking owns oil and gas fields across Texas and Louisiana. It also has 145 producing oil and gas wells, more than 30 drilling prospects. Also, Camber is looking into expanding into sustainable energy solutions to diversify its business and profit from the growth of alternative fuel sources. The company is headquartered in Houston, Texas and was founded in 2003. It started trading in 2016 and can be found on the New York Stock Exchange and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 339 million market cap. They're trading at 325 a share and they have 104 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they do have negative free cash flow each year. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That's also negative each year, except in 2019, they had positive 17 million. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that doesn't look so good. It goes from 7 million all the way down to 300,000. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. The last time they reported their financials was September 30th, 2020. I think a big holdup is due to the acquisition of Viking Energy. And the company mentions their accountants are still preparing the numbers. This is a big red flag for most investors. When a company doesn't give out its financials, it seems like they're hiding something. I can't imagine it's that hard to put together their financial information. In one of Camber's reports, they mentioned Viking Energy's revenue in the second quarter of 2021, and that was close to $11 million. And Camber owns 62% of Viking. They upped that to 73% in July. Viking is a public company, so we could get their financial information just looking up their ticker, VKIN. If a company owns more than 50% of another company, of its subsidiary, then the parent company has to consolidate the subsidiary's financials with theirs. So they have to combine Viking's financials with their financials. This is Camber's income statement, and you can see they have negative operating income each year, and they have negative net income every year, except in 2019. The only reason it's positive is they passed through a gain. They sold an asset and gained $25 million, so they passed it through on the income statement, and that gave them positive net income in 2019. This is Viking's income statement. So all they need to do is add these numbers to their income statement. Same thing with the balance sheet and statement of cash flows. They need to add Vikings numbers to theirs. We can easily do that because we have the numbers. So you can see Viking has much more revenue than Camber. Their revenue went from 8 million up to 40 million, but they have negative net income every single year. So they're losing money as well. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. And they don't invest much in CapEx each year. So pretty much their operating cash flow equals their free cash flow. Since they lose money each year, they issue stock to fund their business. They issued 7 million in 2018, then 15 million, 5 million, and 11 million. So every time a company issues stock, it dilutes the current shareholders, making their shares less valuable. This is Viking's statement of cash flows. It does look a little better since they have positive operating cash flow each year, except in 2018. But they invest a lot more in CapEx than Camber does. So they have negative free cash flow each year, except in the trailing 12 months. That was the first time they had positive free cash flow. And they fund their business on capital stock and debt. They added $11 million of stock in 2020. And they do add debt each year, but it looks like they pay down a lot of debt as well. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. The top is Camber, the bottom is Viking. So Camber has 4.2 million of equity. They raised 147 million from selling their business and they lost 162 million from running their business. When a company has negative retained earnings that are greater than the additional paid in capital, 
it indicates the company is insolvent. So that's a really bad sign. They need to raise more capital. It's similar to being upside down on your mortgage. Same thing with Viking. Their retained earnings is negative 111 million and additional paid in capital of 96 million. So they have negative equity. When you see 4.2 million of equity, you might think at least it's positive. So that's a good sign. Look at the equity section of this company. They have negative 17 billion of equity. You might think this company is doing much worse than Camber. But this company profited $39 billion from running their business, so it's a profitable company. The reason they have negative equity, they bought back $52 billion of stock. When a company buys back stock, it puts it into treasury stock, which is a contra equity account. So that detracts a company's equity. When a company buys back its stock, its cash goes down, and so does its equity value. When a company sells more stock, its cash goes up. It receives cash and its equity goes up. What this company did, it bought back $52 billion of stock instead of giving that out as a dividend. They already give a dividend this company, but another way to reward shareholders is to buy back stock. So if a company buys back 5% of its stock, then your stock price will go up 5%. If a company pays you a 5% dividend, then your stock will go down 5%. Buying back stock is just a way to keep the money in house. Because when a company pays a dividend, it's in your pocket, they can't get it back. But when they buy back stock, then they could just reissue the stock in the future. So this company is doing a lot better than Camber. This company is Boeing. This is the equity section of Boeing's balance sheet. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 4 million of equity and no debt. My Excel file only has Camber's numbers. I didn't consolidate it with Viking. And their weighted average cost of capital is 10%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $463 million. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $339 million. We divide that by 104 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 325. So I didn't really value this company. I just showed you what their free cash flows would need to be to justify their current stock price. So do you think they can get 34 million of free cash flow by 2024? If you do, then maybe the stock is a buy. But I know a lot of people aren't buying this stock based on their fundamentals. They're buying it for the short squeeze or the potential to make a lot of money and get out before it drops. This is where the stock has been trading since 2007. So it looks like the stock got up to about $180 million a share. But of course it was never this high. It just looks this high because they did so many reverse stock splits. A company usually does a reverse stock split so they can get the stock price over $1 because a stock needs to be over $1 else it gets delisted. So the stock may have been trading around 50 cents in October 2019. They did a 1 for 50 reverse stock split and it came back up to $25. So if you own 50 shares at 50 cents each, after the stock split you'd own one share at $25. So it wouldn't change the value of your ownership. The problem is once they do a reverse stock split and the stock price gets higher, you hope it keeps going higher, but instead it kept going lower and lower. This is where the stock has been trading in the last 12 months. In the past month, it went up over 700%. A lot of people started buying this stock because they thought they would apply a short squeeze and make a lot of money really quickly. Another reason the stock price went up is because they made a deal with ESG Clean Energy. ESG is licensing its carbon capture system. This helps internal combustion engines become more efficient and greener. Internal combustion engines are used in planes, cars, and boats. And they have a beta of 1.33, so the stock is a little more volatile than the market. The 52-week low is 33 cents, the high is 4.85, and the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. It seems like everybody and their mother is buying this stock. Half a billion shares have been traded on average each day for the past 10 days. Of the 104 million shares outstanding, 25 million are on float. Less than 3% are held by institutions, and it has a high short percentage. Almost one quarter of the shares are shorted. These are the number of shares that were shorted in the past year, so it was pretty low for a while. And then just in the past month, it seems like a lot of people are shorting this stock. And I don't know if I could disagree with them. It looks like their employee count has been going up. 
It did go up in 2017, then it came back down. Then it jumped up to 86 employees in 2019, but the company stopped providing information, so we don't know their employee count currently. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd be down to three cents. And these are the five biggest shareholders. BlackRock is the biggest at one and a half percent. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE since they have negative net income. They have a terrible price to sales ratio and a bad price to book ratio. Their current ratio and quick ratio are below one. They have $1 million of cash on their balance sheet, but this balance sheet is as of 930, 2020. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of 18 companies in the same industry as CEI and their numbers are really bad. They're worse than everything except debt. They have no debt. And the only reason they have no debt is because nobody will lend to them. There's such a high credit risk. They would have to pay such a high interest rate if they did take on debt. So that's why they just mainly run their business on equity. So to summarize, this company seems to be really struggling. But you might be able to make a lot of money if there is a short squeeze or if there's a big run up. But you have to make sure to sell at some point because the stock will come crashing down. I rank their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.